Hello, welcome to SFF Book Ricks. I'm Re, and today's topic um, is my top 10 fantasy series. Um, in the beginning, I'll say that I did not include any uh, urban fantasy books in this list because they would, would have taken at least five of the top slots because that is my favorite uh, subgenre of fantasy. So in this list, basically, I'm including just like high fantasy, epic fantasy, grim dark, all kind of other subgenres of fantasy except urban fantasy. I'll be doing a separate list for those, my urban fantasy favorites. But um, let's get started. On number one spot is Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. J.R.R. Tolkien, who's surprised. Um, he's like, this series is, is the granddaddy of fantasy. It's um, like the seminal work in the genre. And um, well, up until 90s, uh, pretty much like most of fantasy was somehow drawing from uh, from the world Tolkien created and his world building is just unparalleled. Uh, Tolkien was a professor of, uh, of languages so for example he knew uh, old, old English and he basically wanted to create Lord of the Rings as, a, as an alternative uh, mythology for, for Britain. Uh, a mythology where uh, where the French, like the Normans, didn't take over England, and this is most reflected in the culture of the riders of Rohan. Um, but he also drew from other other uh, mythologies, like Welsh, like Finnish. Finnish Kalevala uh, inspired the story of Turin Turambar. The story of Kullervo from Kalevala was the inspiration for this. So yeah, he, uh, like the world building is, he created languages, he created histories, history spanning, spanning thousands of years for this world. And um, like, it's been a really long time since I read Lord of the Rings. I read it when I was a teen. And, uh, and actually, I'm most impressed by Silmarillion. I read recently, uh, Jeff DeSala did, did this kind of recap for Tor.com website, which I really recommend checking out. And I'm going to link down below so, so you can experience this wonderful, wonderful series too. But yeah, uh, Silmarillion... It's just basically each chapter could be a short, each, chap each chapter alone could be a mini series. Um, and I do wish that we will see one day, for example, the stories of Beren and Luthien. So yeah, Lord of the Rings, it's, it's just special. And I don't know if we'll ever, ever, ever see a fantasy series in this scale again, because basically Tolkien devoted his entire life into into this this one one series, this one world. But yeah, that was the number one spot. And for number two, we have the Discworld by Terry Pratchett. Um, humorous fantasy, uh, wonderfully satirical take. That's, uh, that's actually disguising deep themes, deep discussions about society and how it works and all kind of follies, follies um, of mankind. And um, all this in, in this kind of British humor that, well, it just really works for me. And there are 40 plus books and several like sub-series within the world uh, my favorite, my personal, 
oops, my personal favorite is the Night Watch series, which is about the watchmen of the city of Ankh Mopark. And um, <clears throat> and yeah, they're they're solving crimes, uh, trying to quell unrest, and um, and the characters they're just they're just brilliant. Another great um, great character in this world or, or um, series centered around one character is the death. So uh, basically the impersonation of death himself and uh, he is a brilliant character also and um, and um, I'm, I'm linking below Daniel Green has done done a um, great video about where to get started with Discworld if you've never read it before and um, basically any um, any first book in in one of the sub series for example what for the watch a night watch series it's the gods gods so that's where you can start um, and then there are some standalone books like small gods which is um, <clears throat> a great satire about religion and um, and uh, yeah one of my favorite you're interested in trying this this wonderful series and enjoying getting to enjoy Terry Pratchett's uh, humor, then um, then you can check Daniel's video or start with the two books that I mentioned, Guards, Guards or Small Gods. Okay, but that was my number two spot. Then we move on to number three, and that is Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. Okay, is book one. Eye of the World. Uh, this is a 14 book long series plus one prequel, prequel novella, The New Spring. So there are 15 books all in all. So um, quite a lot of uh, material, but uh, the length of the series guarantees that, that uh, the story arcs are really truly epic and Basically, the last last book it covers uh, the last battle entirely. So, yeah, plenty plenty of epic moments. The character arcs, uh, Rond al Tor, um, <clears throat> and Matrim Kauthorn, and Perrin Ibera, who are the three Taveren, and uh, Ninaive. Naive Almira, Egwene Alvear, uh, and Moira Indamatred, the Aes Sedai, the Blue Sister, who, who started it all by finding them before the Dark One, Dark One did. Their, their, um, their growth from uh, like youngsters from a small, <laughs> small uh, country village to leaders. Of the world, confident people, uh, fully in control of their powers and having reached their full potential. Yeah, I mean, obviously there are these. This series was started thirty years ago, so there are some some aspects of it that may feel a bit outdated. Uh, Robert John did some choices with how he portrays his genders that that might not please all modern readers uh, but but there's a lot of heart heart in this series and uh, a lot to love and it was my teenage one of my teenage first series so so there's there's a great great nostalgia and love in me for this series despite being more uh, open to its flaws, or seeing its flaws now as an adult. Number four, and then that was my number three. And then on to number four, which is Kushiel Start by Jacqueline Carey. Uh, this is a series that has 
three sets of trilogies. Um, I've actually read only two of them. Uh, the original one, where the main character is, or she becomes a courtesan, and in the first book, which has a somewhat slow beginning, we see uh, like her training, her childhood first, then, then her training in the arts of love. And uh, this is a very sex positive culture, um, Terre d'Ange, and uh, they, they believe in, in Maxim, love as though willed. And, um, and like, it's, it's perfectly fine. As long as you, you hurt no one, as long as it's consensual, everything goes. Like, all, all sexes can have, can make love or fall in love. Um, and, uh, there might be affairs if everyone is, is fine with it. And, um, and there's also this, there's a lot of political intrigue in this series. And the Fedre is kind of, um, well, using her uh, bedroom skills and, and as, as a companion who, who has access to nobles, she, um, she hears a lot of things and, uh, and can put uh, one and one together and, and discovers a plot against her queen and, uh, and the story goes on from there. Yeah, I, I was really, really impressed by this series, especially it has some uh, BDSM elements, like the main character, she's an Anglicet. Who, who feels pain as pleasure and she's um, in addition to being like serving angel Nama who is like the angel of love she also serves um, serves Kushiel a god who of punishment and uh, and we will learn what exactly that means um, and she and as, as uh, she goes on with her adventures, she gets a companion, Jocelyn, who is uh, this kind of a warrior monk, who is, they are supposed to remain chaste. Well, you can imagine how long that is going to last, but, but he really, he really tries to valiantly resist this and, uh, and uh, Jocelyn and Fedre, they, they have a bit their own difficulties at first because he disapproves of her lifestyle. Or, well, doesn't quite understand it, let's say that. But yeah, interesting relationships, interesting uh, events, lots of politics, uh, and yeah. One of my favorite series, and it's on on spot four at the moment. Okay, and then let's move on to uh, spot number five, which is the First Law trilogy and the Time of Madness trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. More the latter one. Uh, I had some some issues with how the first trilogy ended. Uh, like I love the characters of this of the first trilogy. I love Glockta, um, and I liked uh, many of the other ones like Logan, Pharaoh, RD. But um, but there were many point of views in this story, and some I was kind of not so interested in, like the Northmen. Mm. And, and there were some pacing issues and the ending. I mean, it's uh, Joe Abercrombie is called Lord Grimdark. And, um, and even though his, his books have like really, really great witty, uh, witty humor that, that lightens it up and uh, makes it like crack to read. Like it's, it's really, his, his prose just grips you. 
so it's really enjoyable to read but um let's just say that i like my books a bit more hopeful the endings a bit more hopeful i mean some of the characters got a happier ending even if everything wasn't perfect but those characters uh who had a bad ending like the only lgbtq plus character in the series yeah that pissed me off and also let's just say that justice wasn't served and um and i would have preferred to have seen seen that kind of ending but then i read the second trilogy time of madness and wow uh basically the world has progressed i think we're, we're about 20 25 years um after it takes place 20 about 20 years after the first trilogy and um and the world has progressed uh, so there's kind of a, uh, industrial revolution and um, and basically uh, worker conditions are just as shitty as they were in uh, 1800s and uh, we have four characters we have Savine who is the daughter of Glockta and an industrialist so basically she's one of the people yeah taking advantage of the workers and um, but she's also cheeky and saucy and um, and very <laughs> enjoyable to read about even though she's an awful person but she will she will grow and learn and then we have Orso who is son of uh, Jezal and Queen Therese um, and he's a scoundrel, he's a rogue, like, um, he's exactly the kind of hedonistic heir that no king wants to have, um, and, but very charming, very adorable character. Then we have Leo and Rike, who are from the north. Rike is, um, <coughs> her father or she's she's one of the northmen or people people of the north and leo is a uh, son of the duke of anglia and finre lady finre who who we meet in one of the i think heroes one of the standalone books and uh, <clears throat> and uh, basically leo uh, well he's the heir he's he has military training and let's say that he's not always the smartest uh, tool on the shed but um, he is he's very he has these ideals and um, well he's nice to read about even though you're you're like sometimes like oh Leo oh but yeah I loved, I loved all the main characters. Oh, and then there's Victorine, who is an inquisitor. So, lots, a lot is going on, and um, and there's there's social unrest. Um, that's that's very interesting. I'm a social sociology. Uh, I've studied sociology, and um, and that that kind of things really like political intrigue and uh, and some kind of um, things happening happening with the society on the societal level those are my catnip but yeah love love the second trilogy and the first one was a really really good read too even if it even though well a four star read not just quite five star or 4.5 star but yeah i recommend it all in all and then there are the the standalones which um i haven't read i don't know if i will maybe at some point but um but i didn't feel like n not having read them like i was able to understand the trilogy quite well Maybe I missed some, 
some nuances and de some depth, but but you can you can read read the second trilogy without reading the standalones. Yes, I'm I know blasphemy. Feel free to blast me down in the comments. But um, on we move and uh, to number six spot. And this I'm optimistically uh, putting here an unfinished series. Two books out of three are out and they are Fireborn and Flamefall by Rosaria Munda. I read them this year and uh, they will be on my best of 2021 um, list for sure. Um, these are YA, YA fantasy, but the themes are so adult and uh, handled so, so well that uh, this is just top-notch series. Um, in this world, there was a revolution 10 years ago that mirrors quite closely the Russian revolution. So the nobles and the ruling family were overthrown. Now there's a new order that's trying to be more meritocratic. For example, people are sorted into four classes. Um, there are the golds, the ruling class, silvers, the, um, the soldiers, military, and then there are bronze, which are skilled labor, no, irons, which are skilled labor, and bronze, which are unskilled labor. And uh, basically a place for everyone um, according to their supposed potential. And the main characters of this series are Annie and Lee, and they are orphans of the, um, of the revolution, like their families were killed. Annie's family was killed by the rulers a ruling family. Her village was burned by a dragon. And uh, Lee is secretly the son of, of the former ruler. So basically he's kind of like Anastasia kind of character. And uh, no one knows uh, who he really is or who really was, except Annie, but uh, she has kept his secret. But because of the um, history between like his father was the one who burned Annie's family and entire village, except for her. So there's, there's antipathy. There's also competition between them because they both want to become the number one dragon rider. Uh, so, so basically a big part of the series is the tournament uh, where they, where they're competing with their friends and, um, and the friend friend group, it's it's really wonderful. Like they are all well realized characters, and they're having really friendly competition. Like, like. I mean, obviously everyone wants to win, but uh, they're not going to let it ruin their friendships. Um, uh, and yeah, there's a lot of um, lots of uh, political intrigue going. Um, like as 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 uh, the first dragon riders since uh, since revolution, they they have a spot. Annie and Lee both have a spot in in the um, in the council ruling council, and there are some difficulties arising, difficult decisions to be made, and. Um, Rosaria Munda, she has a degree in political science and it really, really shows. Um, I've never read, read this well done stories about actually governing, governing uh, a country and making, making all those really difficult decisions. The dilemmas where there is just like uh, a worst choice, a worst choice, and a bad choice, and the worst, even worse choice. So yeah, kudos to Rosaria Munda for for <laughs> making it work, and the plot twists, especially in book two. Chef's kiss. Highly, highly recommend you to try this series. 
And uh, if you don't believe me, believe uh, Elia Brooks, believe uh, Alan of Library of Alexandria, they, they, either, both of them have done gosh reviews. So yeah, check them out if you need more convincing. Okay, but that was number six. Then on to number seven, which is Elantra Chronicles um, by, by Michelle Sagara. This is urban fantasy set in, um, uh, in a fantasy world. And, um, and our main character, Kaylin, she is a, a beat cop in a big fantasy city. And uh, she has these mystical tattoos on her skin that um, appeared when she was a child living in the slums. And, um, and they were tied. Other children had these kind of tattoos and they were all brutally murdered. But Kaylin um, managed to escape alive and um, leave the slums and became apprentice to the, to the police police forces, uh, the guards of the city. And um, in the first book, uh, these kind of similar kind of markings start to appear again. And uh, she and her partners investigate. So murder mystery, basic, um, basic plot of urban fantasy. And um, there are uh, like in Usual urban fantasy, there would be vampires and uh, werewolves and such, but in this world there are fantasy races or fantasy species. Um, for example, there are immortal dragons, uh, immortal barani, who are kind of like a mix of uh, elves and vampires, also long-living, very politically plotty and... Uh, and um, have twisty minds. But yeah, then uh, then we have also Lantines, who are like lion people, and Aryans, who are hawk people, with wings and all, and uh, there are Talani, who are psychics, and they have these kind of tentacles on their forehead. But yeah, the world building is really gradual, um, as the series progresses on, there are 16 books so far, so a lot to read, but they're, uh, they're a bit shorter, kind of like your usual urban fantasy books. So they're not quite the doorstoppers that some, some epic fantasy series are. But yeah, each, each book introduces one of the, one of the, one of the uh, fantasy cultures and species uh, other than humans. And um, so, so you get to know the world very, very gradually. Highly recommend it. And that was my uh, number seven spot. Then we have number eight, Book of the Ancestor Trilogy by uh, Mark Lawrence. The premise of this book kicks ass because the main characters are warrior nuns. Um, the main character Nona, she's she's like really loyal, really stubborn, and has some anger issues. Okay. She and her friends they're training to become nuns. There's a um, kind of a magic school, except they also learn to kick ass beside just doing magic. Um, and uh, there are some training montages. Maybe you like this. Maybe you don't. I personally love it. And there's lots of political intrigue going. War is uh, is about to start because uh, this is an an ice planet. So it's kind of like a mix of fantasy and sci-fi. Um, there's only like um, this kind of corridor open uh, amid the ice in in um, in like the equator, like where, where the equator of the planet is. And that's the only, only um, area free of the ice where you can have agriculture and, and um, like living, good living conditions. So people are having or 
nations and cities are fighting, fighting for resources, fighting for farm country, fighting for, well, <laughs> for having a future and being able to live and provide for their people. So yeah, fascinating world, really interesting characters and, um, and warrior nuns and magic school. Yes, highly recommend. Okay, and that was number eight. Then we have number nine, which is um, called um, the Thessaly Trilogy by Joe Walton. And this is more philosophical, more slow burn, more, I wouldn't say highbrow, but like very thematically deep uh, book or book series. Uh, the concept is that what if goddess Athena and god Apollo of Greek uh, pantheon uh, founded Plato's Republic by bringing in, uh, by bringing in uh, philosophers from different eras, eras of human history. Uh, we're following the first generation of children who grew up in this uh, in this society, and uh, as they make uh, like everyday life choices, try to live their life as as good people and as good society. And that's it. And personally, I found these really interesting to follow, like conceptually, and. Um, so yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, do, do check them out, at least the first book, and see, see if you love them as much as I did. Okay, and then last but not least is Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Um, <clears throat> the first book of the trilogy is, has a haste plot, so uh, we have we have a band of, um, of, well, revolutionaries, you could say, who oppose the Lord Ruler, the immortal uh, ruler and tyrant of this world. So they want to pull off a heist that will, will help to, help to end, end his rule. And uh, they have these, uh, there's a really cool magic system called uh, Alamancy, where people consume metals and, uh, and they, they gain abilities related to that metal. So for example, some of them get stronger, some of them can f get faster. There are all kind of um, special powers related to the metals. And, uh, and it's been a while since I read this series, so I don't remember quite that much, except that I was really, really touched by the endings of book two and book one and three. I was literally like crying. They touched me emotionally. And um, <clears throat> book two was a bit, maybe like it was suffering from book two syndrome. So, so it wasn't maybe quite that perfectly paced, but um, but this is a this is a really excellent series. I think that it's personally, I think that it's it's I like it the most of Brandon Sanderson's series, mm. and uh, and it is part of the Cosmere. So so uh, we will see. And there is um, there is also uh, like like continuation series, another trilogy or quartet that uh, takes place about 100 years after the events of, of this trilogy, when, when society has moved on technologically. So we have, are basically living in a, in a steampunk world. But yeah, <clears throat> if, you, if you like Brandon Sanderson or have never tried him before, Mistborn is a really good, good place to start. Highly recommend it. 
but that those were my uh, top 10 fantasy series um, leave a comment below and tell me which are your favorites have you read some of these series and uh, what did you think of them I'd love to hear but thanks for watching and um, see you on the next video bye for now <laughs>